Diabetes and prediabetes is on the rise. In this video, I'm gonna give you nine symptoms of somebody who might be prediabetic. And this is very important because it typically takes 10 to 15 years before somebody's diagnosed with diabetes. But if you could pay attention to these symptoms and correct them, you're gonna be what I call a genius. Einstein said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. So let's get right into this video. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of KetoFlex and the founder of KetoCamp. Let's understand the first thing here. The average American is consuming around 300 grams of carbs per day. But the human body, the optimal way the human body wants to function, is pretty much one teaspoon of sugar in the bloodstream, which equates to about 80 milligrams per deciliter. When somebody is constantly eating high carbohydrates and elevating their glucose and insulin, symptoms start to manifest. And we're gonna outline nine specific symptoms that I want you to pay attention to, and then we could do something about it when you're aware. The first symptom is excess abdominal fat. Now there's a difference between visceral fat, which is the white fat around your organs, love handles, and belly, and then subcutaneous fat. If you just look down and see if you have excess abdominal fat, that's a sign of excess insulin and glucose production, which typically means somebody might be in a pre-diabetic state. Why is this important first and foremost? Well, we know that pre-diabetes leads to diabetes. And diabetes can lead to kidney disease, amputations, heart disease, and even cancer. So when you have a high production of glucose and insulin in your bloodstream, what's gonna happen is insulin is the only fat storage hormone in the human body. When insulin is around, your fat-burning hormones, they're running away. Think of insulin as the bully of the playground. He shows up and everybody runs away. So that's one sign to pay attention to. The second symptom are skin tags. Skin tags typically show up around your eyelids, armpit area, groin, and on the back. And there's a direct correlation between excess glucose and insulin levels in the body and skin tags being developed. I've seen so many people get rid of their skin tags naturally by changing their nutrition. Yes, you could go and get your skin tags surgically removed and they're not technically dangerous, but it's not taking care of the cause. They might just pop up again. But by lowering glucose and insulin in your body, your skin tags might fall off and stay off. Number three is frequent urination. Maybe you are urinating throughout the day or waking up in the middle of the night to urinate and here's why. Excess glucose and excess insulin production causes your body to retain more water. And remember, anything more than about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of sugar in the bloodstream is considered a toxic state. So as a protective mechanism, the kidneys start to filter out the excess glucose and water follows glucose. This is your body's way of protecting you to eliminate excess glucose in your bloodstream through urination, which leads to symptom number four, dry mouth and feeling thirsty all the time. When you're constantly urinating, you're also going to lose electrolytes and minerals, which is gonna cause you to have dry mouth and feel thirsty, which is why so many people feel dehydrated all the time. The solution is not to drink some juice or high glucose liquids. The solution is to drop glucose and insulin so you don't have this problem going on. Number five is tingling feet and tingling fingers. This is because excess blood sugars can destroy the capillaries to your nerve endings. That's why a lot of people who are diabetic experience really painful diabetic neuropathy, which is their nerve endings actually getting destroyed by excess glucose. Number six, brain fog. You walk into a room to do something, you forget what you walked into the room for. You can't remember people's names. You just feel like a fog is going on in your head. And that's because when the brain is so dependent on glucose and you're constantly having high levels of glucose, your neurons essentially get starved. In chronic conditions, this could lead to Alzheimer's and other brain disorders. That's why some people call Alzheimer's type three diabetes. Number seven, you're hungry all the time. You're snacking every two to three hours. And if you miss a meal, you get hangry, hungry and angry. You're irritable, you can't function. This is because your body is dependent on glucose every few hours. High carbohydrate foods do not activate the same mechanisms in your body as healthy protein and healthy fat. For example, when you are eating healthy protein, protein is awesome because it activates cholecystokinin, peptide YY, and leptin, which are chemicals and hormones in your body that tell your brain and your body, 
your full put down the fork no need to snack let's allow the body to tap into our fat stores for energy when you're eating carbohydrates it doesn't activate the same pathways here's a perfect example if you're at a restaurant and you ate a 16 ounce piece of steak loaded with protein and fat and somebody brings you another piece of steak you're probably gonna say, no way I could eat that. I am so full, I am so satiated. But they bring a dessert cart by your table, you're like, yeah, let's have some dessert. Let's drink some soda. Because your body is not gonna activate those satiety hormones and chemicals with carbs and sugar like it will for protein and fat. Number eight, sugar cravings and carb cravings. That's because your brain is dependent now on glucose. And it turns out there's a part of your brain that lights up when you experience a sugar craving. And it's the same part of the brain that lights up when somebody experiences a cocaine addiction. In this scenario, it makes sugar as addicting as cocaine. And some experts say sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Before I get into the final tip here, if you're getting any value from this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. The last symptom you wanna pay attention to is feeling tired and fatigued after your meals. This is typically seen as a afternoon energy crash or you just feel really tired after eating a big meal. This is a postprandial response we don't want. The word postprandial simply means after eating. So if you're testing your glucose, one of the best things you can do is test your blood glucose. What you wanna see an hour after eating your meal if you're testing your blood glucose is your glucose should be below 120 milligrams per deciliters. Two hours after eating your meal, that should drop below 100 milligrams per deciliters. Typically, if somebody has prediabetes, insulin resistance, or even diabetes, they're seeing much higher levels than that, and what results is a crash in their glucose, and they feel tired. They feel fatigued. Now, those are the nine symptoms to pay attention to. I also recommend getting some testing done, looking at your fasting glucose. The optimal range for fasting glucose is somewhere between 70 and 90 milligrams per deciliter. There's also a test called A1C, very important test, which is going to give you the three month average of your blood glucose. If your A1C is 5.7 to 6.4, that's considered prediabetes. If your A1C is 6.5 or higher, that's considered diabetes. An optimal A1C level is under 5.1. There's other tests that you could get done as well. Triglycerides, typically those who have prediabetes have higher levels of triglycerides. Another test is HDL, which is high density lipoprotein. Typically, if you have insulin resistance and prediabetes, you're gonna have low HDL levels, which is categorized as under 50 milligrams per deciliters. An optimal range to be at is over 60 milligrams per deciliters of HDL. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're dealing with any of those nine symptoms I outlined. Is it one, is it five, is it nine? Let me know the total count that you might be dealing with, but also consider there are solutions to this. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I want you to be a genius, and geniuses understand cause and effect. If you're looking for help to improve your metabolic health, to help with the conditions I mentioned today, then check out BioCoach's Pre-Diabetes and Diabetes Remission Program. I'm gonna drop a link down below for you to check them out. And if this video is valuable to you, please hit the thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.